Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining us on the stream today. Thank you very, very, very much. We appreciate you. Uh, today is Monday, and um, I know you probably had a, hopefully had a great weekend. Um, you know, I did, you know, my grandson, it was his birthday party over the weekend. Um, he just turned five, and that's crazy. Um, Listen to something real quick. Okay, yeah, he just turned five, and and uh, that time passed by so fast. I always tell people when you have kids, when they get up to them double digits, that's really when they start zooming by. So, yeah, enjoy them while you can. And uh, the beautiful thing about grandchildren is this, is that you get to get all the good times with the kids. You don't have to deal with all the bad things with the kids. That's beautiful. When they cry, go to your mama. If they ain't feeling well and won't be up all night, go to your mama. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. Versus when you have the children, um, then you got to do all that, right? Yeah, you bring them gifts. Oh, man, it's, it's just great having uh, uh, grandchildren. Um, that's for sure. You know, I'm, I, well, we... I'll consider more so, I guess, on the younger side of grandparents. You know, at one point in time, grandparents used to be in the 60s and, you know, uh, maybe 70s sometime. But, you know, we, as today, you know, children having, you know, well, at least your children, you know, having children uh, a lot sooner than what they used to back in the day, and that's what caused that. But I know they had a discussion on TikTok about Gen X grandparents and how they don't want to be, you know, sitting at home all day taking care of grandkids. Say, yeah, because we're not really grandparents' age. We don't supposed to be. I'm like, when I became a grandparent, I said, man, I didn't get to get the senior special yet. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, senior special, I hop was like, 50, what, 55? I said, man, I'm nowhere near 55. You know, so shoot, I thought I had to be at, at the senior special level before me, I become a grandparent, but it is what it is. You know, shout out to all the, all the kids out there and the grandkids. But um, outside of that, um, yeah, we're going to have a conversation today. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the you know podcast for sure. We're going to have another conversation over there about uh, Tyson Foods and, and, and some things you probably want to be interested in, you know, with Tyson Foods, what they're doing with the migrants. You know, the migrant situation is... Uh, very uh, important that we look more into that. Uh, you know, we have some, you know, good uh, streams this week. Make sure you come at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, here to this channel, um, at least if you want to hear, you know, my opinions. Now, we got some wonderful, wonderful people uh, who are making content. Please watch all those videos as much as you can. Binge watch if you have not caught up. They're keeping you abreast of a whole lot of things. And sometimes people ask me about certain stories. I'm like, well, a lot of other people didn't cover it on the channel already. I mean, what more will I say? Unless it's a certain angle that I want to go on that they didn't. Um, but shout out to, to everyone on the team with the people that you see and the people that you don't see. All right. So as you see on the screen right there, you say, by, it says that we live rent free in them folks heads. Yes, we do. Um, every aspect of what we do, we live rent free even when they are in rural America, even if they're living in Maine, a state that has 90 plus percent, percent of them, uh, states like Vermont, that we're not around like that. If we are around, maybe it's uh, one or two here and there. And even in states like that, they're thinking about us. When they are in the sticks of Kentucky, they're thinking about us, disgusting us at the dinner table, right? So let's get into what we want to talk about today with our video. 
here we're going to review. And you know, here we talk about what we deal with in the area of just life as black Americans here in America. We have to talk about these things. We have to dissect it a little bit. And that's just kind of like what we do just to keep us on our toes of what we're doing based off of what's happening to other, you know, black people here in this country. So let's cue the video up and we'll get more into this. So give me a quick second. Hey y'all. So yesterday I made a video. Um, it's still up on my page. I basically was talking about an experience I had at work where one of my white co-workers was lying on a black man. And I basically summed up the video saying, you know, I was just disturbed and it's just sad because white people want to lie on black people so much. This is why people are getting killed, falsely arrested, all types of stuff. That was the point of my video. That was the message of my video. So this woman, she has had a personal problem with me since I started there. And I guess it's because I'm black. Um, that office that I've been working at has never had a black person work there in over 20 years. I'm the first black person that has ever worked there. And I've been working there for probably about nine months. Now my boss, the doctor, he's great. I have no hard feelings with him. I think he just had to do what he had to do was best for his business or whatever. But he found himself calling me to fire me, telling me that, oh, she saw my video and it's creating um, hostility in the workplace, yada, yada, yada. Now, mind you guys, I only worked there two days a week. So I posted the video on Tuesday. Today is Wednesday, which means that. And then the funny part is, is that I posted the video and I didn't like the way I looked, So I actually took it down. But she's such a stalker that i guess she found it and again y'all i've never shared my social media pages not my instagram not my tiktok not my nothing with anybody at that job i go in i do my job and that's it but again she's had a personal problem with me for a while um it got back to me months ago that she found my tiktok page and you know she doesn't like the content i post which y'all can look for yourself it's nothing bad i'm just simply being the black queen that i am y'all 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 picking up what i'm putting down she can't take she can't take me being black and, and amazing and good at what I do, good at my job, all of that. That's what my boss said on the phone, my, my ex-boss, sorry. Oh, you, you, you work really well. Did I, he had nothing to say about my performance, but everything to say about this little TikTok video. And I say to him, I'm like, how can you fire somebody about their conduct outside of work? Baby, when I posted that video, I wasn't on the clock. I wasn't on the clock, but you know what? You got it. You got it because I'm still blessed. I'm still blessed. Not only am I a dental assistant and I've been doing that for seven years, I'm, I'm damn good at my job. I am also a full-time student. I am a full-time student. And to, to add the little razzle dazzle on top, I am a dental assistant instructor. I work for a school. I work for a trade school. So I have so much great things going on for me and that woman just couldn't take it. She couldn't take it. She's a stalker. She been on my page looking and she just can't take black excellence just like she couldn't take that black man that she lied on in the dental office. And honestly, y'all, I'm not even mad about a job. I'll get a new dental job. Matter of fact, I got somebody calling my phone right now asking if I could come in and do a working interview tomorrow. That's how that's how God works. But what I will say is, I will never, ever feel bad about standing up for my people. Because I love being black, bro. I love being black. I love black men, women, children, everybody. All right, so let's go ahead on and diagnose this problem here we've seen in this, this particular video. Well, for, first and foremost, you know, if you listen to say well, everything that she was saying that she had going for herself, um, that woman that she's talking about, she knew that. And you have to understand our mere presence, a lot of time in number one intimidates them. And it also reveal how mediocre a lot of them are because in the system of white supremacy, it doesn't really incentivize uh, them to be knowledgeable because it's a system based off of unearned privilege. It's unearned, right? So their way in the door is skin tone, not education, not experience, skin tone. So you see how many times have you seen so many of them come through your job and they're getting all these positions and getting, and then you know good and well they didn't have the education experience or whatever, matter of fact, they're asking you for help 
with their job because they didn't even know anything. They passed over you for jobs. So that woman knew she had all that going on. And when she knew she had all that going on, she immediately just tried to figure out a way to try to get her out that job. You know what I'm saying? Because the longer she would stay there, the more she would expose her mediocrity to the point that the white man was like, man, why we got her here? Like she don't even know anything. You know what I'm saying? Eventually some of them do recognize that some of them don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? Especially somebody who's a, a true businessman. They're like, wait a minute, that skin tone stuff only goes so far because uh, it's about getting a bag at the end of the day. Also on top of that, what I have seen and what I will say, whatever you have going on and we get to the social media thing here in a minute, but whatever you have going on outside of your job, don't tell them anything. Don't even tell, I don't care. Listen, th th let me tell you how they work. They don't come to you like they good at getting information out of black people and you fall for it every time. So let me tell you how they do it. They're not going to like ask you in no mean way or you're not going to ever see them coming when they are fishing for information. So they'll meet you in, in different things, you know, say, oh, hi, how you doing? What's your name? And oh, they're so nice. And oh yeah, my, my name is, uh, uh you know, uh, Keisha. Oh, okay. Keisha. Okay. Welcome. It's a great to have you here and say, oh, okay. So how, how did you hear about the job? And you know, you say, oh, I saw it on LinkedIn and all of that. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it's good to have you here. If you need any help or whatever, you know, oh, they come to you so nice, so nice. And then after they kind of, after they kind of noticed your defenses start getting lowered, then they'll start having conversation with you with time, right? You come back like on a Monday, like today. Oh, how was your weekend, Keisha? Oh, it was good. This and that and the third, but uh, Monday, you know how it goes. Oh, okay. You say, yeah. So, you know, like this the only job you do, you do other things outside of this. Like, yeah, I got this teaching position I do sometime and I got this other job and on top of this, I'm kind of juggling all of that. So yeah, that's why I look forward to Mondays. I enjoy my weekend, you know, with my friends or my kids or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. That sounds very hard. When well, immediately when she hears that now her head turning like, okay, oh, hold on. You got a teaching position somewhere. You got another job and you're doing this too. And all I'm doing is this and I'm barely doing this. Oh no, you Keisha, Keisha a threat. Oh yeah. Keisha a threat. Let me, let me see. Let me see how I can get old, old Keisha on uh, out of here. Let me watch Keisha. See what she doing. And let me watch Keisha. What time she coming in? What time she clocking in? Is she clocking out early? Uh, will she leave? Is Keisha coming back late from lunch? You know what I'm saying? And let me tell you how you know they're telling on you. So you never had no problem with, with nobody and none of the, and I hate the term boss supervisor. I hate those terms but you never had a problem with one of them individuals. And all of a sudden it went from, they just being real cool. All of a sudden, Hey Keisha, what time you left the other day? Like, huh? It's like, you just random out of the blue. Um, well, we got everything done. Reports turned in or whatever. So let's say you get off at five o'clock. Yeah. So I left at, you know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Four forty-five, four fifty, somewhere around there. Well, Keisha, you know, you got to stay directly to 5 PM. Even if nothing is going on, you're like, what, why, why you? And all of a sudden you one day pop up, Keisha, what time you came back from lunch? Now they know what time you came back. That's the thing. When they put that time clock system in there, in their computer, they see what time you came back. They play in a game. That's the game they play. But all of a sudden they just act in funny style with you. Why? Cause that chick, has been watching and going to tell on you every step of the way. So let's say you tighten right on your job, but they're okay. Let's say you fix that. You say, all right, they watch it. Let me leave. Let me stop doing that. So then this woman, since she got your name, now she's online typing in your name, trying to look up your social media. You understand? So she's typing, looking at your social media, trying to see what you're talking about or whatever. So you just being a black person in America, you sharing your ideas, you know, it's your social media page. You know, you being an American, you're free speech. You're not violating no, no platform policies or nothing. You just talking about what happens to black people in America. Right? 
Well, now she stalked your page enough. Now she got you. You have to understand if you're going to talk about issues in America, black people, et cetera, and you got to, and you're working for them, then you need to lock down your pages. I would say if you're working for them, you're not really making money off of this. So if you're not making money off of social media, put all your pages private, put them all private and you screen who comes in. Do not have any coworkers on your page. And I seen somebody earlier say, Oh shoot. Sorry about that guys. I didn't realize I was, I wasn't on the screen. Sorry about that. Um, even people who are on your job and even people who are black, be careful with them too. If you notice they too buddy, buddy with them, you notice that they kind of too funny style. Well, with, with a lot of them, they like, eh. cause, cause when it comes to the job, let me say this, even, even black folks, you got, you got to watch them. See, I, I've always had this mo this motto and this is how I've always done it, especially on jobs. I have zero trust for the folks. And because I've, I've had experiences and I half trust black folk. And listen when I say it, half trust means I don't trust them all the way either. Some of them I see coming, I put them in the post category. Okay. Um, so you want to keep your personal business, personal life, anything personal, any way you get money, no matter what it may be, keep that out of the conversation. Matter of fact, go there and just the term stand on business. Go do that. Do your job, get your check, leave. You do, you're not there to make friends. Now, of course you may meet people. Like I said, I've met, you know, you know, different brothers on the job, I'm brothers I'm still cool with to this day that I've worked with. And if you, you know, you know, if you got a rapport with, with, with the people, if you meet somebody on the job that y'all got along real good, y'all been, you know, They've been your brother. They've been your sister. Y'all, y'all just met on the job. And even you left the job, y'all still talk. Like, you know, we still, you know, me and the other two brothers, we still talk. Uh, matter of fact, you know, uh, uh, shout out to, uh, safety man. He know who he is. He watching, you know, y'all, how you howled at him. He howled at me the other day. It was good talking to the brother. Um, glad he, glad, glad he doing very, very well. We used to work for, for years together and, um, you know, watching how life progress with all the different brothers that I've worked with over the years. But I've always been one that, you know, don't, don't, don't get in my personal business. I'm not going to get you in it. You know, don't ask me anything. You know, it's, it's like pulling teeth. Now with my situation at the time, everybody knew I was doing social media, but I didn't care if, if they came to me and say, you know, you can't work here anymore. I didn't care because I was doing my thing here and, and I was, I was still, you know, I'm doing my thing. I wasn't tripping on that. They already knew what I had going on, but at the same time, they kind of was a little tread lightly with me a little bit because of kind of way I would talk. Um, not that I would walk around there threatening people. No, I'll just do my, my job, do what I had to do, but I always just let it be known that, Hey, <laughs> it, 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 you know what I'm saying? We're going to be about the business. But when you work, when you work with these people, keep your page locked down. Um, understand that, when you're dealing with these other groups as a black woman and a black man, you always going to be considered a threat, um, because you usually got to be two and three times better, especially in some of these degree positions. And that's just really what it is. Is it right? Is it fair? No, but what you have to understand by life, you got to deal with the hand you dealt. Then when you deal with the hand you dealt, then you could, fix it, flip it, do it, everything you need to do. You know what I'm saying I'm saying, um, I've dealt with all groups and I will say that even these all other so-called minority, that's like to say, or uh, people of color, whatever we want to say, you got to watch them too, because you got to see how they doing. Like some of them, they want to be all up in the face of the folks. And then you got some of them that'd be real, real cool with you. But if you see them too much in the face of the folks and then come and talk to you, then I put them in the category of the folks. That's how I've always done it. And I just kind of, you know, I deal with you when it comes to just doing the job, but that's far as I'm going to deal with you.
And they either got now when you like that, they got to respect it. But at the same time, some of them got a problem with it because you're not talking to them. They, they do not like when, yeah, they do be lurking all the time, Kevin. They do be lurking. I remember one time, Kevin, it was me, six other brothers on the job. We all talking. In a corner, you had the, the, the supervisor, white, white man. And I know it's like, you know me, I'm always looking. I, I, well, if you don't know me, I, I'm always looking around. I'm looking, see who's looking. I'm watching. I'm always that type of person. I just don't like to get oblivious, especially in public. I'm more relaxed in my house, but in public, like, I don't even like people around me like that. I don't like people walking behind me. I just don't. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. It's just me. And I noticed he was a staring. Now, everybody talking about sports and different things, but he just kept staring. I say, what is he looking at? So then I, 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 I hit, I hit Satan, man. I say, Hey, 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 look at, look at, look at him looking. So I say, Hey, 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 hey. stop talking. Just look at him. So we all stopped and we just start staring at him just like did the whole time. Then said a word and then just, just kept staring. And then, then he, he put his head down and walked away. Right. Or another time he, this is what he did one other time. Now all the work was done now. It's not like, you know, work would be done. Y'all talking. We was all talking and he said, Hey guys, you know, I kind of want to spread out a little bit. He was like, what? what are you talking about? We look around like, was like, well, something need to be done. Like what's going on? No, no, just, just spread out a little bit. Like, but now when, when the, when the white ones was over there doing that or the Hispanic ones was doing that, I never seen him say, Hey, spread out. As a matter of fact, we would say, look, 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 look at them talking. He ain't over there talking about spread out a little bit. Like, like y'all, you know, like what, what, what is the problem? Like, listen, let me tell y'all something. It is oppressive working for them people. I know you got to do what you got to do, but it's just freaking oppressive. And once you get used to working for yourself, you can't go back to working for them. It's like, just like the work from home thing. They, they're so mad that people are working from home because they can't be oppressive, especially when it comes to us. They really want to be oppressive to us. Micromanage us, trying to tell us what to do all the time. Let me tell y'all something. You're talking about how do we live rent free. You, if you go back to the, to the pandemic, you go back to the pandemic. You remember when we was all in the house <laughs> and I keep talking about that and we really was away from them for a time. Like, think about it. The only time we were really seeing was in a grocery store, but for the most part, black people was out of, out of the way, out of society, right? They police didn't, didn't, didn't do nothing to black folk. Black folks were saving money. Black folks actually was more safer away from them in their house. And in the moment black people came out of their house, oh, it's like they went crazy just abusing black people, doing all kinds of things to black people. Because during the pandemic, when they stayed in the house with themselves, what they normally would do to us, they did it to each other. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? So see, they need black people to function at times outside of financially, because if that 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 violence that rage, if they don't enact that on us, then they go end up turning that on themselves. And then, but you know, if you study European history, that was already going on in Europe. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, um, you're right. Buck Horace. Yes, we are oppressed when we are directly dealing with, um, an oppressor for, that, for that prime example. You don't feel oppressed when you work for yourself. Trust me, if you can work for yourself and figure out a way to work for yourself. Now in America, you're going to have to deal with them one way, form of fashion. But if you have a limited am amount of time dealing with them and 90 plus percent of your time, you don't, I'm talking in the area of your work, trust me, a little 10% you may deal with them is nothing compared to the freedom that you have. 
that you don't have to go punch a clock for them. You don't have to deal with them. You know, hey, okay, lunch ran over. So, did, did, okay, is, is the job done? Like, did I come back and do the job? Like, because my thing is even here with us, I'm not, I'm not, any of them can tell you, I'm not on nobody like that. The only time I'm going to ask questions, if I don't see content going up and I'm like, hey, what's going on? I'm trying to figure out what's going on, what happened. That's the only time you're going to see. If you just take care of your business, you will not hear from me. I'm that type of person. I know I, I highlight at you to see how you're doing personally, you know, or checking in, or, or maybe we just having those conversations, but I don't, I'm that type of person. I don't like to be micromanaging nobody because I think we all adults. You know what you're supposed to do. I shouldn't have to micromanage you. I should just basically sit in and forget it. And I just keep watching everything that's going on, but I don't, shouldn't have to be telling you something all the time. I don't know why they like that. Like I wouldn't want to be micromanaging nobody. Like if I got to micromanage you, then why are you here? Why? I don't get it. Why would I hire somebody mediocre? and I can get somebody who, who got the knowledge. Why would I do that on some skin color? No, when it comes to business and hiring people, I need to get people with the right knowledge. They got the skills, etc. If now if they work out great, they stay. If they don't work out for whatever the reason, well, we got to move around. I don't, it ain't about no skin color with me. It's about who can actually do the job, who fits with the, the mission of the platform or what we're doing. Some people can fit with it. Some people can't. And that's okay. It's nothing bad to say some people can't fit with it. It's okay. Right. But it, it is what it is. But that's just the way that I believe it should be done. Like, like, especially somebody who, who definitely got education and stuff like that. And, and you kind of, you know, they know how to do the job. Why do, why should I have to micromanage you? Okay. You came back from lunch five minutes after your time. Now, the only time I would say something, if you had to relieve a person and this person been here 10, 12 hours and you showing up late to relieve them, like, okay, that's not cool. When people are ready to go, they're ready to go. Right. But if it's not that situation, then nah. And, and I'm the type of person like, look, if you want to leave early, nothing going on and your relief is here, go ahead. I mean, why not? You know, if you got that kind of job, like why be on people like that? That's stupid. But they, they love to micromanage. But like I said, when you work in their system and work for them, you got to deal with them and what comes along with it. Then the best way to deal with that is just to know the rules, know the policies, make sure you let them know you pull any stunts. I will sue. I will go to the EEOC. You better believe that. Oh, I will report you. I'll laugh. And I think Charles and white say, uh, he, he worked, he, he worked to sue. So I guess if you got like Charles and white and you work to sue to get a bag, out of different things. And yeah, you know, they, they know not to mess with you at that point. And always, you know, have the attitude is I came here looking for a job. I leave here looking for one too. Okay. You fired me. So what? That's the more jobs I can get. And if I can't get a job, I'll make a job. Hence Joe Biden trying to ruin people trying to work their own jobs with gig economy. You no, know, I, I don't know how anybody go vote for Joe Biden. They're put, they put in, um, I was reading some here. They put in a, a rule to try to basically harm the gig economy by trying to say independent contractors are employees. Somebody, they're not getting certain protections or whatever. Nobody has been complaining about any kind of protections. Are they? Been, no, nobody. No. The fact is, if you're 1099, you can get certain deductions with your taxes. When you're W two, you can't get no deductions in your taxes. That's how Biden is is harming basically. See, when y'all hear me talk about Biden, or even when you hear me talking about Trump, I told y'all there's only three areas that I that I really support Trump in. Three, only three. I said when it comes to the migrant, when it comes to business, when it comes to taxes, that's the three. Now Biden, it's like a plethora of things I don't support him on. Biden is horrible for business. Biden is horrible for, uh, 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 definitely he caused the migrant crisis, right? So much so American citizens are losing their jobs and they're being replaced literally with migrants. 
and, and he's horrible for taxes. He's horrible on top of being horrible. Ugh. He, I don't know how anybody go vote for him. I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry. They could have had more Democrats. If you wanted to vote Democrat, they couldn't give him give another Democrat to run. But you know, the Dem it's not just the Democrats. It's their whole policy that's bad. And see, Biden, speaking about him, he don't want you to have your own businesses. He don't want you to be 1099 in, uh, uh, independent contractors. He wants you working for companies dealing with these Karens. You understand? He wants you working low wage jobs because Biden is a corporatist. He's a capitalist and he is bought and paid for by these corporations. So he want you working low wages. And if he can't get you to work low wages, don't worry about it. He just let in 7 million people across that border in this country. And they going to take the low wages while you become homeless while you lose your car, while you lose everything. Cause these corporations give a lot of money to these politicians. You don't believe me? Go to the, the website, open secrets. Um, if, if you want to file, so find out you, you can look at, um, the, the campaign, uh, uh finance website. I think it's F E federal elections commission. I think FEC.gov. I think is that one. Well, you can literally see everybody that gives to these political candidates. I mean, it's, 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 it's open records. So when we looking at these different things that with these politicians and how they sell us out and why we have these issues and problems, listen, the system works with, with, with the people working in it. They don't like you get being in business. I'm so pro business when it comes to especially black Americans, because I know we're not going to get any kind of freedom working for these people. We just not ladies and gentlemen, these people will treat us horribly. Listen, the, 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 the problems and even the quote microaggressions, whatever else you want to call it, even starts in elementary school. I didn't know really what racism was because growing up in a black community. I mean, what I know what racism was, I didn't know what racism was until I went to elementary school when I, my first experience is really being around them. Cause you know, Hey, black people didn't, didn't live with them. I mean, I, we had our black in Port Arthur. We had our black neighborhoods. You had your white neighborhoods, you know, you had your, your, your Asians in the area. You didn't have a whole lot of Hispanics. They slowly start coming in, but it was definitely mostly black, white and the Vietnamese. That's where it most was Vietnamese. Um, and black people stayed in the area, white people stayed in the area. And that, and that was it. And if you, matter of fact, if you seen a white person even riding around in the black community, everybody started looking like, who is that? Well, where did they come from? It, it was like that. Matter of fact, I went back home the other day and, uh, I seen, I seen this, uh, white girl riding in the Jeep through there. And I looked and say, it was just this habit. I said, well, who is that? Where'd she come from? Like, is she looking around? I said, we don't know her like that, but it, it's still like that, that, that people just like, we, we, we have our own neighborhood. I say it was either, either one or two, re, two things. Either she looking for, for, uh, some dude out there or she looking for Pookie and Ray Ray to get, to get her fix. That's the only two things that, that, that they out there for. They not out there to be hanging out like that. Now you talking about during the time period. See what well, the reason why I work so hard, I seen too much of that stuff. And boy, I tell you what, I remember this one brother that, that, uh, I knew it was out there trapping. And he had this thing about, he said, man, I'm not selling. I ain't selling in my neighborhood. He said, I ain't selling to nobody in this neighborhood. He said, you know who my clientele is? It's them folks. He said, them folks keep me paid way more than these little dudes out here, nickel and diamond, you know, in, in the community. Oh, man, please. I, I get big money from them folks. He said, they get a whole paycheck up and they got it. They mama got it. I like yeah, he said, I ain't selling this to, I ain't selling this to my people, but I sell it to them, you know? And who else said that mess too? Um, in the interview, China Mac, he said that, that they would sell, you know, work to other groups of people, but they wouldn't sell that to their people in their neighborhood. I mean, I can respect it because I'm like, okay, you ain't got a bunch of junkies in your neighborhood. Let them go somewhere else with that. But Ch 
Braxton, it, it, look, I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, but I know I seen a lot of them folks, boy, especially during that that uh, crack era, or them folks, them folks was on that. You know, they tried to the paint that it was only black people that was on the crack. Oh no, they was on it too. Oh, they was on it. They were on it, and they, and they would and they would be buying way more of that than black people were. Black people might be getting a little, a little five five dollar, you know hit, maybe $10 hit. No, they come out there, they, they getting a lot, you know, and all the stuff, like I said, I seen that's I say, man, I don't want my kids see none of this stuff. I don't want to be in this neighborhood. You know, I, I know everybody whatever, but I can't be here. No, no, no. And then when I go back to the neighborhood, it's just, and it, it, it's definitely not the same. It's not the same at all. A lot of people done died. A lot of people done died. Oh man. A lot of people died. Um, just some people got older. Um, you know, even the neighbors next door, you know, one of them, uh, another one died. Like you just had some neighbors that like in a succession, just, just passing away that we, you know, all of us grew up with in the neighborhood, like things ain't the same no more. Well, let me tell you about the migrants. You see, I remember that black men in Port Arthur, we can always get construction jobs. If you couldn't get any job, you can go work construction. And, and, and they will hire you that day to go work 12 hour construction. If you're a brother that got out, did a bid, you can't get a job, 12 hour construction, you can go get that job. I remember when black men could not get those jobs anymore. And black men couldn't get those jobs when Mexican men came into the, to the mix. Mexican men came into the mix and black men stopped getting those jobs. And all the job sites were Mexican men. And then you find out the Mexican men were paid less than the black men were. And all these job sites were all Mexican men. I remember black men, you see them on roofs, building, building houses. You'll see them out there working on the roads and all of that. And I remember when it switched from black men doing everything with the white man supervisor to Mexican men, all the Hispanic men doing all those jobs. I, I, I remember seeing all that happen, right? So they perfected taking an American citizen out of a job and replacing them with workers from, you know, they're foreign nationals. Of course, a lot of them have been here. They have children. So their children are first, second you know, generation now. And what's happening now is that now it's starting to touch white people. See, I, I tell, I tell white folks this, they perfect oppression on us. They perfect economic deprivation on us first. And then once they perfect it on us, then it's circulate right back to you because you really think they want to pay you money. And matter of fact, y'all getting paid more than we get paid. So they definitely coming after you. So, so when they removed black men out of these jobs, right now is your turn to get removed out of these jobs. And then when black people have been telling y'all for years about, Hey, wait a minute, we can't get these jobs anymore. Oh, stop being lazy. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, black people. Stop being on welfare. Well, now you being replaced on these jobs with some great migrants and pull yourself up by your bootstrap. Stop being on welfare. Stop being lazy. That's the only thing I can say about that. Because that's what we were told, right? When we were complaining about these things, right? I mean, it's, it's, I, like, I tell y'all, I have seen these things happen. This is not internet jargon. I've seen it happen in my city where I come from with a lot of black people. You come to a city like Houston, it's, a, it's like that still to this day. Matter of fact, I know a guy that used to own a construction company, a white guy. He told me this is a trip. He's literally admitting to a crime. 
He said, oh yeah, I would hire, I definitely would hire people that were illegal. He said, yeah, because I don't have to pay them as much and I can get them to work and they'll work all day and won't complain. And he told me that with a straight face. Now he ended up selling this company later and he got, I think like 14, 15 million off of selling this company, but he admitted it that like it ain't, see, they can break the law. It's no problem, but let me and you do it. Oh, we're going to federal prison. So they making a bag cause see now I understand the business side of it. So they don't have to pay them. See when you, when they hire you as an employee, they got to pay you, let's say at minimum, you got to get your salary. Then you got to look at your, uh, uh, federal employment, you know, the income tax, whatever you pay on your income tax, your employer paid the exact number on the other side. So let's say if they took out $200 audio, audio check, your employer paid $200 too. It's not just a $200 that you paid. If you have a state tax, whatever that may be, you paid that and the equal amount of number your employer paid. Um, every tax you have, when, like at least in a state like Texas, if they offer you medical insurance, the company has to pay 50%. That's by law. Now the company can up it if they would like to, but 50%. So whatever you, what you pay and the company pay. That's why some companies, the insurance is good. Some times it's not because what they have to do and you get, you get, I'm teaching you some, something. So what you have to do is you go to an insurance carrier, you work out a deal and they ask you how many employees you got. Then they give you a premium. You have to pay the premium up front every month as, as the employer. Then what they do, they deduct it from, from your check. So that's why you may not get a good insurance because the company trying not to pay much on insurance. Now they may have top of the line insurance offered, right? But they may say, no, this is what we want to pay because we don't want to pay much in insurance. Trust me, your company can get you top of the line insurance if they were like, but they don't want to because they don't want to come out of pocket. Now you may have some employers that may want to do that and treat you right, but just letting you know. So now think about everything I just said. Now let's bring in a migrant. All I got to do is pay him or her a wage. And I'm not even paying them a wage. I'm paying you. I'm just paying them a wage. That's it. So they're saving on all kind of uh, taxes. They're saving on health insurance. They're saving on everything. And these people are going to be happy with it. They're not going to complain. They don't have quote unquote rights like me and you would have. Also, let's even bring in the black immigrant into this too. The black immigrant would be happy with that too. Now, I, you know what? I really don't want to get into my video for tomorrow. Let me, let me hold that for tomorrow because I'm going to dissect why some, not all, some black immigrants really get angry with us. I got to really break that down. So let me say that for tomorrow. But they are happy to be here and they just going to take whatever they give them. So the Tyson food thing, they giving them on-site daycare. They giving them housing and lawyers. They giving them all that. That's still cheaper than in the end paying everything they're paying. The American citizen cannot compete with the migrant worker. I'm telling you from the business side, they can't. The only way the American citizen can stop that from happening is Dr. King level economic boycotts by all American citizens, not just black, but all American citizens, because y'all have to understand the migrants don't have no affinity for America. They're here to get a bag. That's it. That's all they're here for. And they're sending billions of dollars outside this country. See, when we talk about reparations, reparations will stimulate the economy because we're not, we don't have no foreign country we're sending money to. So we get reparations. We're going to invest the money right back into the United States of America for the most part. Now, some of us may take our money and, oh, I'm going to lead the country and whatever, but that's not going to be the majority. 
they're going to invest it right back in the United States. Matter of fact, I keep telling them that you're going to pay more with the migrant crisis or more with migrants in the end. Reparations is the cheapest thing that, that you can do actually for yourself. And in the end, it's going to help you uh, do reparations for, for a future when you become the minority. But we talked about that before. Oh, you say you had a, a, a coworker stalking your social media. Well, I mean, people do that. I mean, they type your name in, they want to see what you got going on. I've always kept, listen, I've always kept my pages blocked. I mean, uh, at least, you know, yeah, not blocked, but, um, uh, private. And I will see people even to this day, even people that watch my show. I mean, they, they try to, they see me, my personal page on Facebook or something and they friend request and I, and I deny all of them. Like, Hey, I got all the pages you want to, to, to send messages or whatever. I got a website, um, that you can, I got a contact form. I got all that, but you're never going to be on any pages where I have my friends and family yet. That's never going to happen. I, I keep, you know, you know, when it comes to certain things, I, I give enough access to me. You're not getting it all. <laughs> no. So keep people off your personal stuff. Well, you, you say that, well, you know, all these different groups now talking about reparations, you're talking about Mexicans, all these different groups talking about AOC talking about it. She's Puerto Rican. They all talking about it. They, look, nobody talked about reparations to black Americans talked about it. Like, like nobody can, you notice that nobody can lead a movement except us, a successful movement except us. And if they do something that it burns out and it fizzles out real quick and notice that we don't latch on to it, 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 it don't last. It, it don't last. It don't stick anything. So, I mean, they could say all day, you know, they want this, they want that. I'm like, well, you know, technically for the majority of them, their reparations is a green card. That's their reparations right there. They didn't build this thing, <laughs> whatever group it is. You, if you didn't build this place, if you didn't, if you weren't on the plantation fields of America with my ancestors, you didn't go through black codes with us. You didn't go through convict leasing with us. You didn't go through Jim Crow with us. If you wasn't there, if you weren't on them trees like us in the amount of people that was on the trees like us, if you didn't go through the cannibalism that we went through with these people, read the delect, read that book, the delectable. And I can't, you know, unfortunately I can't say that word. It's, it's not the N word per se, but it's the other N right? If you, if you don't read that book and you, and they detail what they were, how they was, uh, literally eating black people in America and in Africa. Oh yes. They were doing it over there too, but they don't like to talk about that. Look at what they did to Nat Turner. They, they used his skin for, 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 uh, leather and, 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 and used him, for, used him for grease. And like these, these people, like I said, something, something telling you I, I, out of this, a horror movie, them horror movies, you know, it's how they make good horror movies. Well, shoot them horror movies. is it's, it's about, about accurate to, to what that a lot of them have been doing, doing in their own history. That's why the horror movies are so good. Oh, you say you work in a very, uh, racist field with a bunch of, okay. Yeah. When you work, when you work in a, a field like that, the best thing you can do is learn the game, <clears throat> get some knowledge. And it, while you work in those jobs, build your own business. Like whatever field you in, can you build your own? And while you got that job, build your own, build it up. And then when it gets to the point that that job, that, that your, your, your business, is making two to three times more than the job, then you walk away from it. You know what I'm saying? Don't just, cause some people say, Oh, I started a business. I'm gonna leave. I mean, unless you just for sure that, Hey, the job is preventing me from making a certain amount of money, then do that. Right. But I prefer you to be making a certain amount of money here. And then when you leave and go full time. Now, most people say when you go full time into your business, you will make more. It's true. Yeah. The hills have eyes. Yeah. That's like, that's like being in West Virginia somewhere. When I seen some of them places in West Virginia, I said, Oh my God, that's like the hills have eyes. 
Because at one point in time, my daughter was going to Wheeling University out there in West Virginia. She had got a scholarship for track. And so she went, so I never been to West Virginia. I had no desire to go to West Virginia, but that's the college that gave her a track scholarship. And boy, when I went out there, I'm like, man, you know, I'm like, what are black people at? I'm just like, you know, I'm like, mm. you know, at first she's like, okay, this place here. But they didn't have, but then she seen the black kids show up. So they recruited a bunch of black kids to go to that school. But outside of all of the black kids at the school, I'm telling you, everything closed early. I'm like, I'm like, what is going on around here? Speed limit so slow. Like I come from down here in the Houston area where we're driving 75, 80 miles an hour on a highway in some places. And then maybe 65 in, 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 on the slowest. And you go up there 45 miles an hour on a highway. I say, man, what the hell is this? There's not no highway 45. That's like driving on a city street. What is this? Like that annoyed me. Then the food was bad. Like, man, I can't listen. Places like West Virginia, y'all mess up chain restaurants over there. Y'all can't cook worth it. Another place. In Mass these little places in Massachusetts and and, and and Rhode Island and all them places like that, man. Look, it made me appreciate the South so much. I said, Lord Jesus, when I when I'm going, when am I leaving this place? I gotta get out of here. I gotta get back to the South. Well, you got some good food. Man, please you live up there. You you gonna have <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Then the staring, you know, they, they, they're weirdos, the staring. I'm like, what are you looking at, bro? But that's a cultural thing because in Europe they do that too, but it actually works in Europe with it, actually. Many black people have made content about in European countries where they just staring at you, staring. Like, like what, is the, what is wrong with you? Like, why are you looking at another man or woman for like that? Like, you've never seen them before. I can't stand when people do that. In America, you know, somebody can run up on you and say, hey, man, what's going on? I mean, you you all right? I mean, you keep looking over here. I mean, it's something you need, or, or you, you know, like, they gonna ask you. You know, I've seen people think go to Asian countries and they all staring, they wanna touch them, some of them, and it's not, it's not on nothing bad from what I see, you know, but I also have to say, I've also seen that in, in, in also in the African continent too, some of the staring and I'm not saying it's like Europe, but still I'm like, don't stare at people, please. If you stare at an American, we're probably going to say something. If you want to speak, just come speak. Just say, Hey, how you doing? You know, man, I was curious where you were from or, or whatever. Just, just have a conversation. Don't, don't stare. But like I said, it's, it's not that, that bad. Cause if I catch you staring a lot of times out of 10. I'm probably going to approach you and, and, and just be nice about it. But I'm like, Hey, look, I, I see you. What's up? You know, uh, uh, uh I'm talking about it in, in other places, not in America, you know, we, but I don't have nobody staring at me here in America like that. No, I came. No, I came to say that people stare at me here like that. No, they don't. Cause that's just the culture here in America. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Staring like staring like you some sort of exotic animal. That's that's just that's that's silly. But Ron, Rhonda Myers here talking about she's a nurse and shout out to you for being a nurse. He said people don't care about your race. Help us help. If you ever been sick, you are thankful. If you well, you know what? But Rhonda, Rhonda. We've, we've seen black doctors several times say that people who are sick say, well, where's the, where's the real doctor at? You're not a doctor. I don't want a black doctor. There's been many black doctors have said that. I know two in particular that I've, that have told me that about, they've told them they don't want a black doctor. They could, they'll deal with a black nurse, but when it comes to a doctor, they don't want a black doctor and the black doctor it's going to be the better doctor. Do you know they did a study that black people's life expectancy increase when they have a black, uh, uh healthcare, 
uh, people. In other words, if you have you a black doctor and everybody is, that you go to is black, your life expectancy increase. I believe it. I, 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 I hundred percent believe it because a black doctor versus definitely with the folks, the folks don't even want to give black people medication if they truly in pain, they don't empathize and sympathize with us like that. So why would we waste our time? That's why I tell y'all get you a black doctor, get you one, find a good black doctor. It's very important and make sure you go to the doctor once a year, you know, get all your panels ran, listen to what your doctor is telling you about your health. Um, get you a good dentist. You know, you got a good black dentist. You know, we got good black lawyers. We got, we got good black everything. We, we are, we have some of the smartest people in America, but sometimes you got to go looking for them. Now the beautiful thing about being in places like Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, Charlotte in areas with a lot of black people, you could definitely find that. Now you're not in those areas of black people. You may have to drive to them, um, or whatever, but that's why I say I gotta always be in areas where, where I have access to the, to the community. I can't live in, I don't see, I don't care if somebody tell me you can go move over here. You'll be making 25 million a year staying over here, but I don't have my people. I'm like, ah, I wouldn't enjoy that. I say, maybe I get some money for a short time and I gotta leave. I can't be here. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Yeah, like first of all, it's not gonna work. I'm sorry, I I I can't do the mayonnaise sandwiches. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Uh uh, no no no. You know, I was raised on craft sandwich spread. Now you know about that craft sandwich spread. You know you know. Now I don't eat that today because of the chemicals that's in it. Because I'm very anti-chemical. The more and more I do my research on food, I'm like very anti-chemical. Oh my god, it's like. I have like seen the light on chemicals and, um, it is one particular app and I, I, I'm not going to say it cause I'm not going to give them free promotion, but it's a great app, but it's one app I use that you can just scan the barcodes uh, of, uh, products and it gives you a score from one to a hundred and it'll tell you if, what's all in it. Like the additives, like if it's something bad, good, whatever. And so what I try to do is eat things that's very high up, hopefully a hundred but definitely 80 something above, you know, maybe 75. I don't know, but I try to do that because, you know, I'm like, look, I'm, I'm not getting no younger. I want to be here long as possible. So I got to take care of myself. Right. And it definitely starts with, you know, the things that we're putting in our mouth because America, what it do, it poisons us with food. Then it sends us to the pharmaceutical people, right? who's given us something just to treat a symptom of what we're doing with the food. And then it's a, a constant cycle. You treat the symptom. We go back to eating the, 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 the chemicals and poison in the food. That's not even allowed in other countries, mind you, even African countries. So you keep eating the poison. They keep giving you the, the, the stuff to treat the symptoms and it's a cycle constantly. And it's not really curing anything versus if you stop eating the, the chemical stuff, then you can, uh, then you can stop having to go over here and get the medication. That's really what it is. Like, do you know, like so many things have been marketed, like for marketing purposes, like when they say, Oh, you need to eat three meals a day. Do you know, like people never really ate that much. And if you study the history of human beings, they never ate that much. Do you know that was actually marketing for the food industry so they can increase profits. Cause if you're not, if you're eating, if you're a person, they say you eat one meal a day. Let's say you're that kind of person. Oh, you know, you ate two meals a day. Then you're not eating three. That's less money you spending on food. So they want you to constantly be eating constantly. And do you know the chemicals they put in that food causes you to be hungry? Causes you, they strip all the fiber out of the food, they have no fiber. You need fiber. And you wonder why so many people in, the, in, in our community and this American in general is having all this uh, colon cancer is because you have no fiber. The standard American diet strips all the fiber out. So when you eat it, it, it gives the food actually, and the chemicals gives you almost like a dopamine high. It's crazy. Like do the research what I'm telling you with the food. It is, it is wicked what they do to our food in America, man. It is wicked. Then on top of causing you weight issues, now they're giving you another chemical in the medication called Ozempic or Wegovy. 
injecting you so you can't eat anything, right? Which is not normal. That's why I say, I don't know why people are taking that. I said, that's something that, that that's not right. You know, you, you, God has designed you to process food for a reason, <laughs> you know? So I, I don't know, man, I'll be on here talking, you know, I'll be on here talking forever, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just research, just research it, y'all. Just research it on your own time, and because I'll be here all day talking about that. But thank you for joining us on the live stream. Greatly appreciate it. Make sure you click the subscribe button. Make sure you click the like button. That's also very important for the algorithm. Um, if you have never downloaded our African Diaspora News Channel app uh, in the Google Play and Apple App Store, please do. That's the place that we have content that we we can't post on YouTube or where we take something down with any of our pages, whether it's African diaspora, black congregation, please subscribe to black congregation. Even not went there, whether it's, uh, uh, the Philip Scott podcast or the Philip Scott show. If you like that side of content, all of it is on the app It's a one-stop shop. Uh, we have that because you never know what these platforms would happen. They could take down content, take down channels. We've been there, done that before. Right. Even though we got it back, but we still had lost this channel one time. Right. Uh, when it got hacked. So we want to make sure we have a place that, Hey, we always got our stuff. Um, and you know, we got the, the South Africa trip coming up next month, South Africa trip. I don't know who all going on the South Africa trip, but, uh, that's going to be coming up pretty quick. So, you know, we'll be doing a lot of filming in South Africa. A lot of it's going to, most of it's going to be on the app. Maybe we'll put like a little bit here on YouTube, but the majority of it's going to be on the app. So, uh, make sure you download that app and get a monthly subscription. If you like quarterly, a month, uh, yearly, yearly is better. You just did it one time and, and you forget it. So thank you for being here and uh, join us on the Phil Scott 